Welcome back everyone to the 14.6 edition of the best solo carries. As always, we've got you guys covered with three of the best champions that you can play for solo queue for every single role. Also, we're excited to announce we've done a massive update adding all brand new courses for season 14 on our website, skillcap.com. And if that's not enough, we upload 10 new smurf commentaries every week where a challenger teaches you how to play every champion in the exact rank you're stuck in. The best part? You can try all this out completely risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using skillcap, you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted in Season 14. A new addition to the top lane solo carries for 14.6, coming off some really nice indirect buffs from last patch, is Mundo. Heartsteel and Sunfire Aegis were buffed in 14.5, and those changes have helped to solidify Mundo as one of the best top laners for Diamond and below. Mundo is such a great champion for solo queue because he is relatively easy to play, but can be extremely impactful. With Heartsteel and Sunfire Aegis, you get super tanky from both items while still being able to output a considerable amount of damage at the same time. Once you hit that two item spike, you can begin face rolling through teams, soaking so much damage and be an absolute nuisance in fights. Due to Mundo wanting to build all these tank items, prioritizing your ban towards Trundle is a good idea. Trundle is able to steal your resist with his ultimate, so it's not an ideal matchup. The core build for Mundo consists of a Heartsteel Rush and a Sunfire Aegis or Hollow Radiance second and Spirit Visage third. For the rune page, it's Grasp with Demolish, Second Wind, and overgrowth, followed by magical footwear and approach velocity for secondaries. The best fighter top lane champion that you can play for solo queue in 14.6 is Urgot. Urgot is just such a reliable top lane champion right now, as he has very few bad matchups, which makes him one of the best blind pick top laners. It's really only against a rage top laner like Vayne where Urgot struggles more, so she's a solid band choice. With his Hullbreaker and Black Cleaver core, you have a very defined win condition to play towards on Urgot, as the two item spike is incredibly strong. Your 1v1 and even 1v2 strength with those items becomes super insane. In regards to the Keystone Rune for Urgot, Fleet Footwork is winning the most right now and has been gaining a lot more attention in recent patches. When Urgot has his W fully maxed out and you've got it running constantly in a skirmish, it's going to stack up the energized attack from Fleet extremely fast. In an extended fight, you will be able to get off multiple Fleet procs, which makes the rune really great value for Urgot. One of the best pure carry top lane champions that you can play right now who can absolutely run over games is Olaf. With the Ghost and Flash summoner spell combination, Olaf has incredibly strong all-in strength early in lane. Once you learn the limits of Olaf, he can be so rewarding because there will be so many windows for you to snowball early on. With the recent change to where Tiamat is now a component to Stridebreaker, it's given Olaf so much indirect strength. You get to rush Stridebreaker now, and the item is literally perfect for Olaf, as it provides him with instant shoving strength, sticking power, and all the base stats he likes. Sundered Sky is the second pickup, as it amplifies the skirmish strength of Olaf tremendously. Matchup-wise for Olaf, Trundle can be a bit of a pain due to his ability to steal your AD and resist, so he's a solid ban choice. For the rune page on Olaf, look to grab Conqueror with Triumph Alacrity and Last Stand. Optimal secondaries are Biscuits and Approach Velocity. With heavy hitters from recent patches like Briar and Volleybear both seeing nerfs in 14.6, it's going to open things up for Master Yi to slide into the top three. Ever since Kraken Slayer was changed a few patches back, it's taken priority over Blade of the Rune King and has given Yi a more lethal one item spike. Kraken Slayer got changed so that it's now stronger early on, but weaker late game, however, it's turned out a positive trade-off as Yi has the ability to impact the game much earlier on. With Titanic Hydra being a viable third purchase on Master Yi, it provides him more margin for error in those late game fights, which helps you be more consistently impactful on the champ. It's only Rammus and Volley Bear that Yi players are losing to at a higher rate right now, and with Volley nerfed for this patch, using your ban on Rammus is a solid option. The best rune page for Master Yi consists of Lethal Tempo with Triumph Alacrity and Coup de Gras, Roll with Eyeball Collection and Treasure Hunter for secondaries. With so many meta junglers being tagged with nerfs over the past few patches, it's allowed for a jungler like Warwick to move up in priority, and he cracks the top three for 14.6. With Kane and Lee Sin being prioritized a ton in meta right now, Warwick is one champion who's finding a ton of success against them. Warwick hates playing against champions with strong peel power as it limits his influence in team fights, so banning out a meta support like Janna or Maokai is good value. There's also this new carry build that has been popping off on Warwick in solo queue, and it revolves around Stridebreaker, Eclipse, and Terminus. A bunch of high elo Warwick players have been running this setup and it's his highest win rate build by far. Eclipse is just so strong right now that any champ who can take advantage of it should be, while both Terminus and Stridebreaker have become much stronger in recent patches after their buffs. The rune page that you should be taking on Warwick consists of Press the Attack with Triumph, Alacrity, and Last Stand, Grab Eyeball Collection, and Ingenious Hunter for secondaries. Ingenious Hunter is really great if you're playing this new build because it will reduce the cooldowns of the Stridebreaker active and Eclipse passive. If Assassin junglers are more up your 
rally, there's nobody better than Kha'Zix right now. Kha'Zix has slowly made his way up the pecking order over the past few patches, as we've seen nerfs to assassins like Rengar and Evelyn. Kha'Zix currently has some of the best snowball power for any champion in the game with the two item core he's running. You build Ghostblade into opportunity on Kha'Zix, and the amount of added mobility from both items is extremely powerful. There isn't really a must ban jungler right now for Kha'Zix, but you can never go wrong with banning out Rengar. The best rune page for Kha'Zix revolves around First Strike with Magical Footwear, Futures Market, and Cosmic Insight. Run Sudden Impact and Treasure Hunter for secondaries. Avoiding nerfs for 14.6 and now the best solo queue mid laner is Ari. With Karma hit with nerfs to this patch, Ari will now move up in priority even further. Of course, Ari was directly buffed a few patches back, which was a factor in her power shift, but her core build is another huge reason to why she's so good right now. Ari is able to abuse two of the most broken items in the game, being Malignance and Lichbane. The Lichbane nerfs from last patch did not lower the strengths of the item at all, and it's such a nasty second pickup for Ari. You don't even need to land your charm when skirmishing on Lichbane completion because you have so much damage coming out of your R and then auto attacking to proc Lichbane. This just makes Ari a much more forgiving champion and takes away a lot of the skill that would generally be required to find success with her. Even Horizon Focus as a second pickup is doing really well on Ari right now and is a completely viable alternative to Lichbane that many pros have been running. Ari really doesn't have many terrible matchups right now, but Cassidy is one of the better ban options. As for the rune page on Ari, look to run Electrocute with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter, Mana Flow and Transcendence are the best secondaries. It really feels like the champions who are strong in meta right now are ones who can abuse the most broken items, and Nefiri is one of them. The champ is not getting nearly as much attention as someone like Ari, but Nefiri is incredibly powerful right now. Eclipse is arguably the most OP fighter item in the game, and it's the item that you're going to be rushing on Nefiri. Profane Hydra is one of the most broken lethality items, and it's what you will be slotting in second. The amount of burst you have on this two item core is super nuts, while you get a bit of added durability as well due to the shield from Eclipse. You can round out the core build by going opportunity, and this just makes Nefiri's ability to dive in and out of fights really good. Nefiri doesn't like to play against highly mobile champions, as it's more difficult for her to lock onto that target and burst them out, so Ari is a really good ban for the current meta. The optimal rune page for Nefiri is First Strike, followed by Free Boots, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight, while Sudden Impact and Ingenious Hunter are for secondaries. Players are really sleeping on the Ingenious Hunter for Nefiri right now, as it works great with her core build to reduce the cooldowns of the Eclipse passive and Profane Hydra active. If you are a mid lane main in Platinum or below right now, your ticket out of those ranks is Aurelian Soul. Ever since Aurelian Soul was changed to where he can now acquire more Stardust when using Q, the champ has been excelling. The scaling strength of Aurelian Soul has become even more insane, and you've got a very clear win condition to play towards on the champ. Reach two items on Aurelian Soul, and you could begin taking over as Rylize with Leandries is such a massive spike. The longer games last, the more impact Aurelian Soul will have, so you never want to be coin flipping early fights that you're unsure you'll win. Focus on stacking up as much stardust as possible in lane, and be sure to use your teleport proactively. If you find yourself never using teleport back to lane in the first few minutes, you probably aren't maximizing stardust stacks as well as you could be. Champs with high mobility are ones who give Aurelian Soul the most issues, so using your ban on Ari or Cassidyn is good value. Rune page for Aurelian Soul consists of Comet with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm, followed by Magical Footwear and Minion Dematerializer for secondaries. Going from very niche and underplayed to now one of the best champions in the entire game is Kog'Maw. The cumulative effect of Cog's 14.5 buffs have been huge, and especially with Smolder and Senna being nerfed in 14.6, Cog priority rises even higher. Blade of the Ruined King and Terminus are the two core items you should be looking to run on Kog'Maw for every single game. The order in which you purchase the items does vary, though, as Terminus Rush is actually quite underrated after its recent buffs. However, you really can't go wrong with Blade of the Ruined King. Blade Rush into Terminus second, and then either Hurricane or Rage Blade third is a great core right now. Into a comp with lots of melee champs or tanks, Hurricane works great, while Rage Blade is better into heavy ranged or more squishy comps. The only major weak point to Kog'Ma is the fact that he lacks reliable self peel, so prioritizing your ban on a meta champion with easy backline access like Kane or Ari is good value. Some of the matchup stat lines for Kog right now are absolutely wild, as he's winning 56% of the time against Kai'Sa and 55% of the time versus Jin. Due to those recent buffs, Kog doesn't have a matchup currently to where he's got a negative win rate. Optimal rune page for Kog'Ma is Lethal Tempo with Triumph, Bloodline, and Last Stand, followed by Conditioning and Over growth for secondaries. Riot is buffing Infinity Edge for this patch, which is going to give a nice indirect boost to an ADC who's already been pretty good in recent patches, being Jinx. We've had Jinx rated as an S tier ADC over the past few patches, and this change to IE will solidify that even further. If you guys caught our OP builds video that we released yesterday, we talked about how Static Shiv has been picking up a lot of traction on Jinx and is actually winning more as a rush item than Kraken Slayer. The core build you should be looking to try for this patch revolves around a Shiv rush into Kraken 
Slayer 2nd and Infinity Edge 3rd. There isn't really a specific ADC that you need to ban out right now, so similar to what we mentioned for Kog'Maw, using your ban on a meta dive champ like Kane or Ari is good value. The best rune page for Jinx consists of Lethal Tempo with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras. Grab Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm for secondaries. Another ADC who's going to benefit from the Infinity Edge buffs and moving into the top 3 for 14.6 is Twitch. With Senna and Smolder dropping down in priority for this patch, Twitch is going to be a really nice pickup. All the ADCs we have in the top 3 for this patch have been liking the way the support meta has been trending as of recent. Riot's nerfing Solstice Slay yet again in 14.6, so it gives more indirect rise to those enchanters who pair really well with a hyperscaler like Twitch. Throughout 14.5, the Janna Twitch duo was winning 55% of the time, which is incredibly high. The three item core that you should be looking to run on Twitch consists of a Blade of the Ruin King Rush into Hurricane Second and Infinity Edge Third. Lethal Tempo is the optimal Keystone Rune with Presence of Mind, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras, while Magical Footwear and Biscuits are for secondaries. We've got more nerfs to melee supports for this patch due to the Solstice Slay changes, so it's only going to make Janna indirectly stronger. Janna has been overperforming super hard in recent patches and is excelling with a more offensive carry build. It's not Moonstone like you take on many other enchanters, as you're rushing Imperial Mandate to provide yourself and your carry with a lot of added damage. Even after the recent Dream Maker buffs, Azazak's Realm Spike continues to outperform and is the best support item upgrade for Janna. Despite Smolder being nerfed for this patch, his priority likely remains high and it's just giving Janna a lot of added value for the current meta. Janna works really well in tandem with any scaling ADC due to her ability to keep them extremely safe throughout the game. It's really only champions who have longer ranged instant catch power who Janna struggles more against, so using your ban on Blitzcrank or Morgana is good value. The standard rune page for Janna is Comet with Mana Flow, Celerity, and Scorch, followed by Eyeball Collection and Relentless Hunter for secondaries. With melee supports like Maokai and Blitz losing more power for this patch, Camille is going to be an even more attractive pickup. We've had Camille support in the solo carry top 3 for a few patches now, as she's just the perfect support if you want to hard carry games. The agency that Camille has over games is really great, because her early kill threat and engage range is amazing. Locking an enemy down with E and then bursting them out with Halo Blades auto attacks is super lethal and will allow you to acquire early advantages in a lot of matchups. The Blood Song support upgrade is also incredibly strong for Camille. First core item in the build is Sundered Sky, and then you can go into one of Sterix or Eclipse next. If your team is really lacking damage but has a strong frontline already, going for the more offensive Eclipse can work great, but if you need to be that frontline for your team, Sterix is the play. You really want to avoid champions with strong peel power when picking Camille, so Janna is the no-brainer ban if you intend on playing her. For the Keystone Rune, look to grab Hail of Blades with Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter. Best secondaries are Shield Bash and Bone Plating. If a melee support like Camille isn't your forte and you'd rather a ranged carry, there's nobody better than Zyra. Zyra has that same kind of agency as Camille, but more so through her teamfight impact than her catch power. Catch potential on Zyra is still quite good with her E, but it definitely isn't anywhere close as reliable as Camille's E. With Zyra, that level 6 spike is very key to play off of, as landing an E will guarantee a huge chunk of damage to follow. It's all about finding that pick with E and then using your full combo to burst out whoever you catch. The constant zone control from Zyra's plants makes her quite a nuisance in mid to late game fights, so you really want to do your best to play around objective timers. In those tight corridors or choke points is where Zyra can really excel, so getting vision down early around objectives so that you can play up and look for those picks is important. Zyra's only glaring weakness is the fact she's more vulnerable to all in plays due to her more squishy nature, so banning out a pick support like Leona or Blitz is a good idea. The standard two item core for Zyra that you should be picking up in every single game consists of Leandries and Rylize. It's of course going to be Zazak's Realm Spike as the support item upgrade. For Zyra's rune page, you should be grabbing Comet with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch, while Taste of Blood and Relentless Hunter are for secondaries. If you truly want to improve and rank up fast, head on over to skillcap.com. We just finished a massive update adding all brand new courses for Season 14. We even upload 10 new Smurf commentaries each week where a challenger teaches you how to play every champion in the exact rank you're stuck in. And remember, you can try all this out risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcap, you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted this season. So there you have it guys, a complete look at the best solo carries for every single role as we head into 14.6. Thank you all for watching, good luck in solo queue, and we'll see you back soon.